Hello. You're very welcome to this video called Splashing Out on a New Quadratic. I'm Seamus Bellew and this video is for science and electronics students. We will concentrate mainly on throwing a ball vertically first and then at a particular angle and velocity so that it follows along a parabolic path. So we're looking at quadratic models. So first of all, what do we mean by a model? Or a mathematical model. A mathematical model is a description of a system using mathematical concepts and language. We could also view it as a method of stimulating real situations with mathematical equations. So, so looking at the word quadratic, so quad means kind of four, so you have a quadrilateral four-sided shape or farmers have their quads, four wheels, they're out in the fields. And then we're going to be interested in these kind of shapes here, parabola shapes. And the word parabola, the word para comes from Greek and it means beside. And bola is kind of like a throw. So you're beside a throw or you're beside a throwing ball, for example. So in everyday life, where would you see parabolic shapes? So this is an example of a bridge, so a, para, a, a parabola shape, and it's used in the suspension and that sort of thing. Uh, the rainbow, I think, that you see in the sky would be a parabola shape. So very basic, this is a, a basic graph of a parabola shape. So this is a parabola shape here. So how do we plot that parabola shape? So you plot your, your t-axis and your h-axis. If we're doing h equals t squared. Or if you're in school, it might be x and y. So if t is 0, h is equal to 0 squared, which is equal to 0. So there's the point 0, 0. t equals 1, h equals 1 squared, which is 1. So there's the t value of 1 and the corresponding h value of 1. So that's 1, 1. t equals 2, h equals 2 squared equals 4. t is 2 and the h is 4. So that's the point 2, 4. And likewise, 3. And 3 squared is 9, so that's the point 3, 9. Then likewise, the negative figures. So the parabola is a symmetric shape about the, the y-axis, or in this case, the h-axis. So because all those negative figures squared give you the corresponding positive result here, so this is symmetry. So the h-value of 1 is the same as the h-value of minus 1. Likewise, 2 and minus 2, 3 and minus 3. So that's a parabola shape. And we're interested in looking at the coefficient, the sign in front of the t squared. So if that's positive, it's usually a U-shaped graph. But if that's negative, if it's minus t squared, it'll be upside down, just like we saw on the bridge there a minute ago. Now, the laws of motion are going to be of interest for us. <clears throat> so just a quick summary. So the laws of motion, taking the basic equations, um, we start at time zero. And we're interested in what's happening the vehicle at a particular time so it's moving at a constant acceleration so the velocity is changing all right but the acceleration is fixed it's constant so we let u usually stand for the initial velocity v is the velocity at the point in time that we're interested in a is the constant acceleration and this is the first law of motion and you can kind of see that comes from the definition of acceleration if you rearrange that formula v minus u over t is equal to acceleration and rearrange it and you get it in that form that the final speed is equal to the initial speed or velocity plus a t. Now when you get to study speeds and velocities and you're looking at direction and things uh, the, the, the direction is important but we'll keep things very simple this is linear and we just go along a straight road there like that and we are interested in the direction in the sense this is the positive direction and this is the negative direction. So, oh yeah, I forgot to mention, S stands for displacement or the distance. So, for example, if that's zero, that's a displacement of six meters, let's say, it's plus six. But if the car moved down here, the displacement is minus two. So all the minus is to do is to give you a sense of the direction. So this direction here is what we call the negative direction. And it's the positive direction. The second law, V 
phi squared equals u squared plus 2as, squaring both sides of that, and a bit of manipulation with one or two of the other formulas. And that's the third formula there. And this is the formula we're going to be interested in. So it's from the laws of motion. S is equal to ut, u the initial velocity, t is the particular time, how long does it take to get from the start to the point of time that we're interested in. We call this the final velocity. So that's the time, final time. Uh, plus a half of a stands for the constant acceleration times t squared. So you can use this to find out the displacement at any particular time. So a is the constant acceleration measured in meters per second squared. V is the final velocity measured in meters per second. Per second. T is the time and s is the displacement. So let's look at a particular example. If the initial velocity of the car is 6 meters per second, if it takes 8 seconds to complete the journey and the acceleration is constant, 3 meters per second squared, we asked you to work out the final velocity. Well, v equals at, v equals u plus at, so u is 6, at is 8 threes or 24, 6 and 24 is 30, so the final velocity is 30 meters per second. But here we're interested in working out the displacement of the car after 8 seconds. So uh, u is 6, substitute u in, t is 6, there's a half, a is 3, and the t is 8 squared. So substituting all that in, we see that s is equal to ut, 6 eighths of 48, plus half of 3 by 8 squared, that comes to 96. 96 and 48 is 144 metres. So the displacement after 8 seconds, that displacement there is 144 metres. So our first application, we're going to take a ball and we're going to throw it vertically upwards. So we're assuming there's no air resistance and we know that if you throw a ball straight up in the air, you expect it to come straight back down. Um, so the initial speed will be 30 meters per second. That's given to us. And so we're kind of just labeling that as the height axis or the y axis. Uh, we're not expecting any x axis here because the ball will just go up. The x coordinate will always be zero and it just comes back down. So what we're going to do is we're going to track the heights of the ball at different times. So let's see how this works. So again, just draw the situation. Uh, the initial height is four meters, let's say. So we have somebody on a podium. So the ball is four meters up from the ground. And we've just positioned the person over here so that we can kind of see what happens, not to be confusing it with the axis. But we, we will track the heights as we go along. So the ball is propelled up into the air at an angle of 90 degrees, so it's vertical. So there's no horizontal component. We'll talk about that again. So let's see what happens after one second. So after one second, the ball has reached a height of 29 meters. So carrying on, after two seconds, we're now at a height of 44 meters. So you're beginning to notice that it's beginning to slow down. So at three seconds, uh, the ball has a height of 49. So we're expecting the ball to turn around at some stage. So the question is, does it go on another bit or has it already dropped? So if we go on to the next slide. And the ball has started to fall. So by coincidence, um, or in this case, at uh, this operation, this parabolic nature, there is symmetry involved. We'll come back to that. So the ball after four seconds is actually in the same position as it was uh, after two seconds. So carrying on so then now that we've established that you probably expect the ball after five seconds to be at the same position where it was after one second and that's 29 meters and uh then down um at, at after six seconds the ball has reached a height of four uh four meters so the ball has reached a height of four meters and then the question is how long more would it take for the ball to land on the ground we'll come back to that so what we're going to do next is we're going to do a kind of a timing thing. So we kind of know how long it takes the ball um, to achieve certain heights. But what we're going to do is we're going to plot a two dimensional representation of this. This is like linear motion. This is really like the car going along the horizontal road 
on its vertical. So the same principles hold. But before we look at those, so at time zero, the ball has a height of four meters. So where was the ball after one second? After one second, the ball was at a height of 29. So we're going to do this in a two dimension. We're going to have the T axis and the H axis. So after one second, the ball has a height of 29 meters. After two seconds, we expect it to be up at 44. After three seconds, 49, and so on and so on. So we plot that situation. So there's the ball after two seconds, and then the rest of the, the times there. So for example, after five seconds, the ball is back down uh, at height of 29, and after six seconds, it's back down at a height of four. So we've kind of timed. So after one second, where was the ball? What was the height? After two seconds, and so on. Now we should be careful. This axis is the time axis. This is not actually telling us how far away is that ball from from the starting point. How many meters is it along there? So this information is, is, is not given to us yet. We're only measuring the height of the ball at different times. We'll come back to the displacement and, and the X or the X component. So again, that's just the time axis. Now I think we mentioned already the ball was propelled with an initial velocity of 30 meters per second. So we're coming back to our laws of motion. So do you remember this law here? We had it a few minutes ago. And the plus C, all the plus C means is um, that's just the height above zero. So if if zero, if a height of zero had been our starting point, there'd have been no C there. So that C value is just four. It just represents a starting point displaced away from zero. So C is equal to four. U is equal to 30 meters per second. That's given to us. We decided to propel it with a velocity of 30 meters per second. And A is the acceleration due to gravity. So normally the figure nine, minus 9.8 is taken. But just for ease of calculations and not to, to have too many complications with decimal points and so on, we'll just round it up to A equals minus 10 meters per second squared. So substitute. So substituting these values in uh, into the displacement. Now, in the last slide, we had displacement with the symbol S. But here we're just calling it height. It's just a displacement in a vertical sense. So from now on, we'll use H. So that's the same formula. So substituting 30 in for U, half of minus 10 will become minus 5. And there's the 4. The, the, um, the ball is on a podium, or a height, a 4 initial height. So that's the displacement or the height formula. So rearranging it, we usually put this quadratic term first, minus 5t squared plus 30t plus 4. So using that formula, we can work out the height of the ball at different times. Okay, now that we've got our formula for the height, uh, what can we do with this? Well, it's a very natural question to ask. When does the ball hit the ground? So we view this as the ground here, or in this scenario here, the equivalent time is when h equals zero. So when the ball would be at that position on the time uh, height graph. Uh, we can use this relationship to establish what's the height of the ball at any particular time as we go along there. So for example, at 2.7 seconds. So let's look at this first. So if t is 2.7 seconds, substituting 2.7 in for t everywhere in our formula, we work out that h is equal to 44.55 meters. Uh, the next thing we'll do is we'll just do a quick check on the heights. So we gave you these initially, so you weren't quite sure where they come from. So let's just check now where they came from. So substituting 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 into this formula here should verify that the heights were 4, 29, 44, and 49, and back down again in the same way. So there's the detail there. If we just check one of them, for example, uh, t equals 4 seconds. h is equal to minus 5 by 4 squared. 4 squared is 16. And minus 5 by 16 is minus 80. Plus 120 is 40. Plus 4 is 44. And that's the height that we had. We should just draw your attention to this here. Sometimes students make a wee mistake. 
they might go minus 5 by 4 is minus 20 and then square that to give you something like 400 or something but it's to do with bomb das or bod mass the order of precedence you do the power first so it's 4 squared is 16 times minus 5 is minus 80 plus 120 plus 4 equals 44 and similarly for the other calculations so let's look at this question now uh, when does the ball hit the ground well we know it hits the ground after six seconds so we have our formula h equals minus 5t squared plus 30t plus 4 so the question is when is the ball on the ground or alternatively when is the height equal to zero when is h equal to zero so we let the height formula equal zero and we solve that so looking at this in more detail so this is the quadratic formula that you all remember from school minus 5t squared plus 30t plus 4 equals 0. The quadratic formula, the solution of this are the two answers, will be t equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, where a, b and c are the numbers or the coefficients of, of the, the quadratic formula there, the quadratic equation. So a is minus 5, the number in front of t squared, just the number minus 5, B is the number from T, so just 30, and C is the number on its own. And you always order it in descending powers of T. So A is to do with the T squared, B is to do with the T, and C is to do with the constant term. So we'll work this out now on the calculator, and sometimes errors can crop up here, but most of you have this button here in your calculator, the fraction button, something over something. So if you start to key in the top bit into here, and the 2a into here that will prevent uh, some mistakes from arising so what i would do is i'd encourage you get the calculator and actually put in the blanks first like this so go minus bracket blank and we look at the minus answer first we'll come back and do the plus see from once you have this minus answer in there are two answers plus or minus so when you all the minus work done out and got your answer you can just come back in and change that minus to a plus sign and it'll give you the, the answer so minus something, minus the square root of something to be squared, minus 4 times something, times something. And those brackets are important, that, that they'll prevent any errors from cropping up. So just key all that in, leave the numbers blank for a minute, and then it's all over 2 times something. So you're using this function here. And then all you do is just position in your numbers then where they should be. So you know that the b is 30, so just put 30 in there. You've already looked after the minus bit minus you've already the squared in so 30 in there for b minus 4 by a and the a value is minus 5 so just key in minus 5 the c is 30 and likewise this is the value of a here so that's a as well and uh, that's a there so you put minus 5 in here so that's how the calculation would look and then when you press so as we said uh, feeding the a b c into the formula so t is minus by 30 and we're using the minus option here instead of the plus uh, square root of 30 squared minus 4 by minus 5 by 4 all over 2 times minus 5 so feed all that into the calculator and we get t equals 6.13 then come back and just scroll along and change that minus sign to a plus and you get t equals minus 0 0.13 but just checking the details t is equal to minus 30 uh, minus the square root of 900 plus 20 by 4 which is 80 so the total of all that is 900 plus 80 which is 980 so t is minus 30 minus the square root of 980 all over minus 10 minus 30 minus 31.3 which is 61.3 minus 61.3 divided by minus 10 so t equals uh, 6.13 so this concludes the discussion um, where the ball hits the ground at 6.13 seconds. So that's a final wrap up on that situation. Now, this is an example of uh, two water taps and the water has been spewed out. So it's been propelled with a certain velocity at a particular angle. It's not going up vertically. It hasn't been propelled vertically. At an angle of uh, 90 degrees so we're going to get um, 
So the water is a certain height at certain times, but it also has got a certain horizontal direct distance this way on the x-axis. So we're going to look at that now. So we're going to start off and we place a ball this time at a height of two meters and we're going to project it or pellet with a particular velocity at a particular angle and we're going to follow the path that the, that the ball takes. So again we have a timing thing, we're going to time what's the height after one second, two, three, four seconds and so on. So after two seconds the ball had reached a height of uh, 22 meters and after four seconds the height of the ball was back down at the same level as to which it started. The height was two meters so it went through obviously that's 17 there we'll come back to that uh, 22 uh, 17 at three and now down to two at four seconds. So and you can see now uh, the ball eventually lands um, with a height of zero so shortly after a time of four seconds again we'll be asking what time did the ball land uh, on the ground when the height was zero so this time we know it's going to be four point something so all we've done is we have plotted those different points along there so after a time zero the ball had a height of two one second had a height of 17 two seconds 22 uh, back down again um, at three seconds for 17 and at uh, four seconds was two and then sometime later it's on the ground h equals zero uh, just a, a point at this stage the parabola is a symmetric shape it's symmetric about the axis along the highest along the, the highest point that's what we call the vertex of the parabola and you might be curious as to why these numbers are the same so because we we're doing this example we made the numbers kind of nice but basically um looking at any parabola shape um that's a particular height there if that's a height of 15.2 you know directly across from it at 15.2 it'll be the same so at the particular at, at a different time obviously so that's the time 15 point that's the height of 15.2 meters at a particular time but over here there's a corresponding time when the height is 15.2 but the symmetry about that axis it's the same time from here to here as from here to here so from one second to two seconds that's only one second in time and from two seconds to to three seconds it's one second in time whereas down here two and two again the heights are uh, at the same level there's a symmetry about the the axis that's a distance of that's a time a time gap of two seconds and then another two seconds from there to there okay so the principle behind our ball are uh, follows a parabolic path so again this is related to the displacement formula that we had in the laws of motion s equals ut the initial velocity plus half of at squared now here our initial velocity um the ball is propelled with a particular velocity speed speed is u but it's also projected at an angle so there's kind of a vertical component and a horizontal component so while u is the initial speed when we're looking at the vertical displacement or the h the height we have to look at the y component so a small bit of theory from trigonometry and we'll come back to that uh, the formula is very simple so just for today for this video it's basically it's going to be the sign of the particular angle so we won't worry too much about the trigonometric details but just suffice to say it's based on the basic definition of sine and cosine the sine and a right angle triangle is the opposite over the hypotenuse whereas the cosine the definition of it on a right angle triangle is the, the length of the adjacent divided by the length of the hypotenuse so we got our y component and our x component but here you can just feed it into the calculator we'll show you that now so for our example we're going to take the angle to be 30 degrees and we're going to take u the initial speed at which it was propelled to be 40 meters per second and we'll see that the sine of 30 is 0.5 so multiplying the sine of 30 which is 0 0.5 0 0.5 by 40 gives us the value of 20 so it's going to be 20 t minus half of g g is the same value as we had before the acceleration due to gravity and that's a figure of minus 10 meters per second squared so half of minus 10 
or minus half times g will be minus 5t. And this time, because we had a height of 2, so the initial height will be 2. So again, just piecing all that together, the initial velocity is 40 meters per second squared. The angle 30 degrees, sine 30 is 0.5. A, which is the same as gravity, G, minus 10 meters per second. The height was 2, the, the, the initial height is the C value. So that's your formula for H. And rearranging it, then we get the squared value first. H equals minus 5t squared plus 30t plus 2. So let's do a quick check on those heights now to see that they match. So substituting the various heights into that formula. So here's our check on the heights at different times. So if we take t equals 4 seconds, for example, substituting 4 in for t, at these values are very similar to the, to the previous example. Um, so we have minus 5 by 4 squared. 4 squared is 16. By minus 5 is minus 80. We had that particular discussion the last time. Plus uh, 20 times 4, which is 80. 80 and minus 80 is 0. Plus 2 is 2 meters. And similarly for the other heights. So here's a drawing then. We have our parabola shape. And there's the ball. Uh, back on the ground at a particular time. So the question is, when does the ball hit the ground? So this will be done the same way as we did for the first example. So we let that formula equal zero and then the quadratic formula. So there's our quadratic formula again, our minus b plus or minus formula. Again, using the fraction button in the calculator will help alleviate any errors. a is minus five, b is 20, c is two. So substituting all that in, and again, we encourage you to do the brackets. So substituting in the B this time is 20, 20 in there, uh, minus 4 by minus 5 by 2, all over 2 times minus 5. And we get the T value to be equal to uh, 4.10 seconds. Uh, that's using the minus option. If you put the plus option in, we'll get a negative answer. You can check that out. So the ball hits the ground after 4.1 seconds. So to three places of decimals, it was 4.09 something, which was round to two places. It became 4.10. Now the other answer will be minus 0.1 by symmetry. Okay, so here's a picture of what we've just done. We know that the ball uh, started from a height of two seconds went to 17, uh, 22, back down 17, and back at 2 at 4 seconds, and then sometime later hit the ground. And we now know that time is 4.1 seconds. So the next question to ask is, how far has the ball moved horizontally? So that's the zero position, and how far along has it, has it, has it moved after the 4.1 seconds? So we've been doing a time scale, calculating the heights at different times. But now we're just interested in exploring, so vertically, um, sorry, horizontally, how far has the ball moved? How many meters has it moved? So, again, using the laws of motion, uh, we got the height um, from, from the, the, the law of motion, but uh, there's, there's, there's no acceleration involved in terms of the x component. It's the force of gravity that gave you the, the acceleration where the law of motion came in. So that was the y component. And likewise, we've got an X component and then the acceleration bit kind of kicked in there. So this is a straightforward exercise. The displacement along the horizontal direction, we'll give it the X value. We've already done the Y value or the H value. X is equal to U cosine theta. So again, remember the angle at which we projected the ball at a velocity, initial velocity 40 meters per second. And the angle was 30 degrees. And we'll work that out now in a moment. And it's a linear, it's a linear relationship this time. So looking at that then, u is 40 meters per second. The angle is 30 degrees. Cosine 30 degrees is 0.866. And for those of you that are familiar with your trigonometry and your roots, that corresponds to the square root of 3 over 2. But we can just run with the decimal. So um, u times the cosine of theta is 40 times 0.866 and that gives us 34.64. So the, the 
displacement along the x-axis will be 34.64 t depending on what the particular time is and that's a linear so we'll see how that works now so again just looking at the graph that we had from the time so with heights against the different times so after one second the height was uh, 17 and after two seconds the height was 22 and so on but now we know quite simply after one second the displacement is 34.6 meters and after two seconds the displacement is two times two times 34.6 which is 69.2 likewise for three after four seconds the displacement is 34.64 multiplied by four and that gives you 138.4 meters so and at time zero to answer the question uh, what was the displacement of the ball on the horizontal after when, when the ball had landed on the ground we knew it was on the ground at 4.10 seconds and substituting 4.1 in for t x is equal to 141.86 meters so the last question to ask is do we need to rescale this axis here how do we draw the new graph that takes into account the x values so they might be in meters so this graph here is for these times one two three four the height of the ball at different times time in seconds but what do we do now if we want to plot the graph for the displacement along the x if you want to do y against x your traditional school graph so do we rescale this or do we draw a new graph for the position of the ball what do we do so again to summarize the ball has moved horizontally by 36.4 by 4.1 uh, seconds uh, so multiplying that out and we get 141.86 meters but that graph there we use that for the time so we carry on with our discussion so just a wee discussion on scaling so we'll take a break from that example for a moment and let's just look at this parabola here h equals minus t squared plus four so here's the scaling we're going up in steps of a half a half one one and a half two and likewise down the negative and we can see that this is the correct parabola uh, to match that equation. So what happens if t is equal to zero? If t is equal to zero, h is equal to minus zero squared plus four. So if the time is zero, the height is four. What would happen if t is equal to two? Two seconds. So it's minus two squared. So it's four by minus. So minus four plus four is zero. So at two seconds, the height is zero. What would happen at one second? Minus one squared is minus one. Minus one and four is three, and that looks to be reasonably okay. And likewise for the negative values. So that's the equation for, for that graph there, that parabola. Now what we're going to do is we're going to change this scale and we're going to see what happens. So again, just to ask the question before we go on, if we change the scale to one, two, three, four, what do we expect to happen to this graph? Is the graph going to get wider or does it become narrow? Well, you know that the root of the graph is 2. When t is equal to 2, the height is 0 and likewise at minus 2. So basically, if the 2 is now at this position, if we go 1, 2, 3, 4. So basically, you expect the new parabola to have a, a, to have a slightly narrower. So it'll look something like that. So let's look at that then. So there's the new scale, 1, 2. So the old parabola, because 2 was out there and out there, it looked a bit wider. But because we've rescaled, the parabola now looks like this to match the scaling. There's the 2, and there's the 1, and so on. Now, what we've done on this scaling, if you go back and look at your old parabola, so What's the equation of that old parabola and the new scaling? So you might be a bit confused what we're doing. So originally we plotted this parabola here, and that was it there on the old scale where it ran 0, 1, 1, 1, 2. But then we changed the scale, so this parabola changed shape to match the scale, as it were. And now we're just asking the question on the new scale, what's the equation of that parabola? And there's the equation of the new parabola. So this discussion is to do with um, similar parabolas uh, on uh, similar scalings. And you'll see how it's connected 
with the that the ball uh, where the heights were plotted against the time and now we're going to plot the heights against the x values or the displacement the horizontal displacement so again looking here the ball moves horizontally by 34.6 meters every second so there's 34.6 there 16.2 and so on so there were the scalings we had in the original time graph so finally just to wrap this application up a final look at the time graph and we're asking the question do we need to draw a new graph uh, in order to plot the displacement along the horizontal axis against the corresponding height of the ball at different times so remember our previous discussion where we had a parabola drawn on a particular scale and then we changed the scale so we saw that the equation of the parabola changed depending on the scale so a similar thing is going to happen here so again uh, if t is 1, 2, 3, 4, substituting the values in, you get the corresponding heights. So this is how y or the height is connected with t. So that's your height versus time graph. And we have the equivalent x values. 34.6 uh, corresponds to 1 all the way up to 4, corresponding to 138.4. So there's a linear relationship. So what we're going to do is, like in the previous discussion there, we're going to just reassign values. So we leave the ticks as they are, so the shape is going to be the same, but now we're going to call this 34.6, this one 69.2, and the last one there 138.4, and this now becomes the x-axis, and we've got the y-axis, and we've got the same shape, but it represents a different scenario. So the equation of that graph will be y equals minus 5 over 34.6 squared times x minus 69.2 all squared plus 22. So that's a different equation uh, corresponding to that parabola compared to the one uh, that we had height against time, but you saw that in the previous discussion as well. So where did this formula come from? Well, all we did was we completed the square in, in, the, in the height or the y versus time. And that gives you something like t minus something squared. It's of that form. And then we just rearrange the x formula. x equals 34.6t t equals x over 34.6 so substituting x over 34.6 in for t in that rearranged formula where we completed the square we effectively ended up with this formula but we won't be asking you to do that it's more just background information but just as a, a little observation if you fill in uh, x equals 138.4 into this formula what happens 138.4 is double 69.2 so 138.4 take away 69.2, still 69.2. But 69.2 divided by 34.6 is just 2. So effectively, they all cancel each other out. And we end up with 2 squared, which is 4, times minus 5 minus 20 plus 22 equals 2. So x equals 138.4 gives a height of 2 meters. Similarly, if you fill any of these values in, you get the corresponding heights. So obviously, if you fill in 69.2, so zero, my, sorry, 69.2 minus 69.2 gives zero, all the squares, so all that's zero, plus 22, and you know that if x is 69.2, you get the height of 22. So obviously, this formula here matches the parabola shape when we have these x values now assigned to those ticks. So effectively, we don't particularly need to draw a new graph can just reassign values and in accordance with the previous discussion we now know this parabola here represents the displacement the horizontal displacement in relation to the height uh, but obviously under the proviso that we've got a new equation and finally if we know that when t was equal to 4.1 seconds the height was equal to zero so there we are so in our new graph x or y against x if you substitute x equals 141.86 in for x there, we expect all this to work out to be zero. So that would be an interesting exercise to do, and you should get that y equals zero. The ball is on the ground, it's got no height. So basically, um, and that gives you the displacement um, when there's no height and the ball has landed on the ground and it's 138.4 meters away from the base. So again, just to clarify that last comment there, uh, if 
the time is 4.1 seconds h is equal to zero but on the new x scale um, when h is equal to zero or y equals zero the displacement is 141.86 meters not 138 as i said there a moment ago so basically um, h equals zero the ball is on the ground the displacement from the zero point there is 141.86 meters so bringing it all together then uh, we had y equals you throw a ball up in the air and it follows a parabolic path so using the law of motion uh, y is equal to u sine theta of t minus half of g t squared plus c if there's an initial height so um, in, in, in this uh, new example we're going to take u equals 40.42 the angle theta is 60 degrees so the sine of 60 degrees is 0.866 the cosine is minus half and feeding all that information in we work out the y or the h formula uh, the minus 5 hasn't changed because that depends on the acceleration and here uh, to get the coefficient of t you multiply the 40.42 by the 0.866 and that gives us 35 and we just decide that we're standing at a height of 3 when the ball is projected so y equals um, our h it's minus 5t squared plus 35t plus 3 and now we'll just ask you some questions uh, based on that find the height of the ball at various times so supposing we asked you to find the height of the ball after three seconds all you would do is you substitute 3n everywhere for t supposing we asked you to find the height after four seconds it would be minus 5 by 4 squared plus 35 by 4 plus 3 and so on so now you're able to use this now to find the height of the ball at different times and do you remember we generated the parabola shape doing that uh, when is the height of the ball three meters well you know it's three meters at time zero because you were told that that's the initial but you can kind of see that if you put 3 equal to h the threes cancel out on both sides so minus 5t squared plus 35t is equal to 0 and you could divide across by t and divide across by 5 and suddenly you end up minus t minus t plus 7 equals 0 t equals 7 so the other time is when the height is 3 meters at t is equal to 7 that's just got simply by putting that formula equals to 3 cancel out the threes and effectively you're factoring out a t or you could divide across by t and you know it's not zero and you get the t is equal to seven uh, the peak value so the peak value is always halfway it's because the probability shape is symmetric so you know it's got the same height t equals zero t equals seven so halfway between zero and seven the parabola will have a height sorry the, the peak value of the parabola will be at three and a half seconds when does the ball hit the ground or when is h equal to zero you just let the height formula equal to zero and solve your quadratic formula um, x is equal to u cosine theta of t x equals in this case uh, u times the cosine so it's 40.42 multiplied by a half and that gives you 20.21 so x equals 20.21 t and now you can find out um, how far away uh, from the starting point uh, is the horizontal displacement of the ball uh, just by filling in your t values then we had another application of the parabola we had our parabolic bridge so for example we might have an axis like this that the height of the bridge corresponds to the to the width of the bridge and the equation would link it again it's going to be a parabola shape so again we can derive uh, a parabola formula so let's say this is the the the, the, um, the formula given this time so x corresponds to the width so what we do is we position zero in the middle so it's got the positive values and the negative values and it's symmetric and the h axis is the axis of symmetry this time so if we take the formula to be h equals minus 3 over 64 x squared plus 27 let's say i ask one or two questions uh, find the height of the vertex what's the height of the vertex going to be but all you do is you put zero in for x so h equals zero plus 27 so again that's like the that's the that's the initial height and then the next obvious question to ask is what's the width of the bridge so the width is we let h equal zero so 
So there's our h. Let h equal 0. So if we do that, what happens? h equals 0. Now we don't have to do quadratic formula this time because there's no x term. You can just uh, bring the negative term over the other side. So that corresponds to 3x squared over 64 equals 27. Cross multiply and divide by 3. So 64 by 27 is equal to 3x squared. Divide by 3. x squared equals 576. x equals plus or minus 24. So if we were 1 meters, it would be 24 meters. So that's 24 meters there. And that's minus 24 meters. So finally, just a wee application on the bridge. We're going to ask the question, can a vehicle or a vehicle a width 32 meters and a height of 20 meters pass under the bridge? Recall the width of the bridge ran from 0 to 24, 0 to minus 24. So the total width was 30. The total width was 48. Two 24s are 48. So likewise here, the total width of the vehicle is 32. So we have 32. So our x value is going to be 16. We're looking at uh, 16 this direction and 16 this direction. So obviously, we need to calculate the height to see what happens. So substituting the x value of 16 into the formula for the height of the bridge, uh, y, and we get minus 3 over 64 by 16 squared uh, plus 27 equals 15. So in other words, if that's 16 meters there, uh, we know that the height of the bridge is 15 meters. But the height of our vehicle is 20 meters. So this vehicle cannot pass through the bridge. So it's this scenario. So that's our 16 meters. The height is 20, which exceeds the 15. So the answer to this question is that particular vehicle cannot pass onto the bridge. So we hope you've enjoyed the video on the quadratic mathematical models and we look forward to seeing you the next time. Thank you very much.